Hello and welcome back to another episode of Project Supercar, the channel where I've taken an old Audi estate, chopped it up and I've built myself my own DOI supercar and this is the prototype behind me. Now this is part two. The last episode you saw me put this car back together again so we could talk about the design and we just touched on the fact that there's a lot of regulations that you need to um, consider before building your own DIY supercar. And in this episode, we'll just talk about some of the cars that influenced me to design this one, and we'll take a look at some other DIY cars that other people have built. Taking inspiration from other car designs out there is nothing new within the car world. All designers will admit that they've taken inspiration and ideas from other cars, and I'm no different. So let's just cover some of the cars that gave me inspiration and ideas for building my own DIY supercar. Now, for many of us who want to build our own car, we are usually influenced by the cars that other people have built. So I thought I'd just show you a few of the cars that inspired me to build this thing. Now, it might not come as uh, much surprise to any of you that the Lamborghini Countach was, or is, my favorite car. Big inspiration for this. Now, I quite like both sort of versions of the Lamborghini Countach, which is the original design, and also this one here, which has got all the scoops on it and flares. Now, if we take a look at the original design, it's a very clean and styled car. Now, that's something that I wanted to try and achieve. Now, one of the things I don't like is fake air scoops and fins and stuff like that. If it's on the car, it should be for a reason, it should be for a purpose. So I wanted to design something that had its own unique styling, which is very difficult to do when you're on a tight budget like I am. So other cars that inspired me, the Lotus Esprit, no surprises there. I've owned a couple of these. I had the uh, Gijaro style, which is like a square shape, if you like, and then the Peter Stevens X180 style, which was the, the rounder version. So I like the styling, it's like um, look past the scoops if you like and look at the car underneath it all. Ah, we have the Aston Martin Boxster, which when I saw that years and years ago that inspired me. I, I did like this design, I just thought it needed a little bit more added to it. Um, Audi Quattro, short wheelbase rally car. <laughs> Function over styling. Uh, let's take a look. BMW, the original M3. Again, I like the arches and that sort of stuff. It's functional, that's what I like. Ah, the uh, Di Tommaso Pantera. Um, this one's quite modified, obviously, that's not standard wheels or anything, but that looks absolutely fantastic. And that has its own unique styling as well. And then of course you've got the Stratos, I think if I remember rightly, I'll have to put the name up, I've just forgotten what that is, but that was a um, Bertone design that if I remember rightly. But I've liked, I like this, there's, there's definite styling there. Ah, yeah, the Vector W8. Again, I like this sort of thing. There's a few bits and pieces that I'd probably change, but again, this, these are the cars that influenced me to design this thing. So, I'll probably go over more images like this over the coming episodes, because I just can't put everything into one video regarding styling. So, when we look at this car in more detail, I'll show you some cars that gave me inspiration. When I started to design and build this car, Many people asked why I didn't go down the foam or block foam route where you have a large block of styrofoam foam and then it's machined out of one block. A little bit like this. Oh, 
very good and yes, one day I would love to use that technology if I had the funds to use it. Now unfortunately, having that done is very expensive. Um, I, I had a look online and you're talking somewhere between, depending on what country you're in, something like £45 an hour. I've seen some as $175 an hour. And then you're looking at, say, a few days to build that foam shape, if you like, depending on how sort of technical or detailed your car is. Now, one of the problems of doing that is actually starting with the shape of the car first, is then you have a major problem because you've got to get all the mechanical stuff to fit into that shape. So say, for example, I had designed the shape of the car and I had the wheel arches too close together, by right? just a few inches, for example. If I then try and fit all the steering and then the engine and the gearbox and all that, I might find it doesn't all fit. So I had to engineer the car first, then do the styling second. Because don't forget, once you've made your plug and then you've made the body shell out of fiberglass, you only have like a tiny fraction of the overall car. The body just makes like a very small percentage of the entire project. So a lot of people get stuck into this, they, they, they fall into this trap. Um, they'll buy a kit car online, kit car, and you'll get a, you know, a shell and a rudimentary chassis, and then it's up to you to engineer the rest of the car, which is 99% of the car. And often, uh, people struggle to finish the build because of this. So I think a lot of people who try and build their own car fall into this trap. You really do need to lay out your entire car first, all mechanically, seating, steering and everything, and then try and get your design and styling to sort of fit the mechanical parts of the car. Now, at this part of the video, I'm gonna show you some images of some cars that people have built themselves. I don't want to be sort of laughing at them, okay? I sort of ummed and ahmed whether or not to do this, but I want to show you some examples of what I think has gone a little bit wrong. But for every single one of these people, they get thumbs up from me for having a go, okay? So try not to laugh, sorry. Right, we've got this um, orange car. Not exactly sure what's going on. Um, but yeah, make up your own mind on that one. So the next one I found is this thing. Um, to me, none of the scoops or fins or anything like that sort of blend together. It's almost as if they had the car and instead of trying to style it as a complete car, they just concentrated on little areas. Okay, you, you know, nice try. Then there's this one, I think it's a Mustang underneath that. Um, I don't know if it's finished or not. Um, interesting. Uh, there's another look. Okay, so I know, you know, the rear of the car really doesn't quite work, I'm afraid, sorry. Um, but I know that designing the rear of the car is actually very difficult. Um, and we'll get into that in another episode. Then there's this one in grey primer, not finished, but um, okay, I, I don't think those headlights would actually be very legal. I remember those regulations that we have to follow because you can't just make a car and make it look cool the way you want it. There's these bureaucrats and they tell you what you can and cannot do, okay? Otherwise it won't go on the road. And we'll, we'll cover that in other episodes as well. Uh, there's a um, angle from the rear. Okay, interesting, it's, you know, you know, there's a side view, okay? Mm -mm. I think it's an MR2 underneath all that lot. Uh, there's the, then there's this, uh, this is, um, I'm not sure what it is. Um, talk about fin overload, there's fins all over it. Uh, there's the rear, and I, and I know doing the rear of the car is difficult. And there's another look from the front. See, I think what's going on is a lot of people try and design a car 
and then they end up with a car that hasn't got any style and then they put fins and scoops everywhere to try and make it look interesting. Um, we'll take a look at this one. I mean, I'm not saying it's ugly, but is there just too much? Is there too many fins and cuts and angles on it? I like cuts and angles, but just a little bit. But this one, I don't know, it, it seems a little bit um, overkill. Now, it isn't just DIYers that get this thing wrong. Um, I think there's, there's a company out there that I really like, which is obviously Lamborghini, and they've made some fantastic looking cars, but have they gone too far with this one? Ryan Little. <laughs> Lamborghini is ugly, but is it overkill for a supercar which is supposed to be for road use? Is it too much? Too many fins? Too many sort of air scoops? I don't know. Anyway, styling, like beauty, like I say, is in the eye of the beholder. There's some people out there that think the Lamborghini Countach looks ugly, and they think the Fiat Multipla is a work of art. So you can't please everybody. Now, when I designed this car, it was really for me. Now, I'm gonna be honest here. The end result is about 70% of what I wanted to achieve. I'm about 70% happy with it. There are areas on this car that I wanna go back to and change the styling. Um, someone made a comment uh, on one of my videos, said, paint the car. Now, it doesn't quite come out on camera, but this car looks better in person. It might look like these panels are flat because there's no sort of shimmer, there's no paint on it. But I can tell you, every single panel on this car has got a curve in it. There is not a single flat panel anywhere. So it doesn't come out too well on camera. But I think once this is painted, and I've changed some of the styling, I think I might have to go back and have a go at the bonnet again. I think that needs tweaking. You've probably seen some pencil marks here and there that I want to change. But uh, we'll go over that in other videos. But yes, um, so that's styling. Uh, we've just touched on it in this video and I will go into more detail as I make more videos. Talking about making videos, um, I just want to apologise to everyone out there because I haven't uploaded in a while and I did notice some of your comments. Uh, obviously the world has changed, we're in this crazy lockdown world. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail, but it's basically wiped out my whole life. Okay, um, Everything was cancelled when that happened, um, all the car shows is gone all the car meetups is gone, everything I had planned for this year is now being cancelled and done. I was hoping to bring some special guests to the channel, you know, expand on the channel, because I wanted to do some car reviews and I wanted to talk to people who had already built their own kit car, DIY supercar or heavily modified car, something like that, something interesting. So I wanted to, ex I wanted to expand on the channel, but all that doesn't look like it's going to happen now. But what makes it even worse is we're now hearing stories that the figures were exaggerated, the death certificates have been you know, made up, um, the fake, um, there's doctors out there saying it's nothing but the flu. And you know, you look around and you see that the world's economy has been destroyed and people are out of work, businesses have shut down and all this sort of stuff. This is insane. Um, okay, this is a, a car channel, I don't want to go into geopolitics or anything like that. And um, but I just want to say that this lockdown has absolutely smashed everything I had planned for this channel. So yeah, for a while I was a little bit down in the dumps, you know, I just couldn't feel, you know, 
didn't want to really get out of bed and, and do videos, if, if you know what I mean. But I'm going to carry on, okay, and I'm going to have to change a few things. Some of the plans I had planned aren't going to happen. So, I think what I'm going to do is, um, actually I'll bring you over to the donor car. So, the donor car. I started stripping this down and then the whole world decided to close down with crazy governments doing crazy stupid stuff, bloody bureaucrats. Anyway, this is sat here and it's getting in the way. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on stripping this down. I've got to cut it all up, that sort of thing. So I'm going to make a series of videos and I'll just concentrate on this for a while, I think. Once this is totally gone and I've got all the spares that I want to keep and I've got rid of the rest and I've got my house back together again, I'll continue doing prototype videos and I'll go over the styling in more detail and I'll show you how I made the rear clam, the doors, electric windows and all that sort of stuff. So I will be making more videos. I don't know how regular they will be. Um, I've got a whole load of other things going on in my life at the minute which I'm going to have to sort out. Um, but yeah, what, I mean, while I'm here, I mean, what's with all the censorship that's going on? I mean, it's like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and all this, like, it's gone crazy. It's, it's um, you know, being a YouTuber doesn't seem to be uh, much fun anymore. I mean, do you remember when YouTube sort of began and it was all about the little guy, yeah? But it's all gone corporate now and it's just not fun anymore. Anyway, um, I'm sorry to be a bit of a downer. Let's end this video on an upbeat note, okay? Yeah, let's be upbeat about this, okay? Let's put all the nonsense about the lockdown behind us. Um, I did this channel because I enjoy cars and I want to meet other people like myself or who are into cars and building cars. In fact, you know, if you live in the area, I mean, I'm in the UK, I live in the Midlands, if you just want to stop by and have a cup of tea and just, you know, talk about cars or something, you're more than welcome. Drop me an email or something like that, you know? So, uh, anyway, let's be upbeat, okay? I'm sure we're going to get past all this craziness that's going on in the world. And I will see you in the next video, uh, whenever that is.